Hi, fourth graders. It's good to see you today. Uh, we are celebrating dance party for Spirit Day, and I have my backdrop as dance. Hope you can see it. Yeah. And this morning, Ms. Reed and Ms. Ten um, were our inspiration for dance party, and all the collegiate leaders um, celebrated dance party Spirit Day by dancing the electric slide at eight o'clock this morning. And it was fun. And I hope you dance today. I uh, hope you found a little bit of time to maybe get outside or move around your house um, and really enjoy the day. We are thinking that we're gonna finish this book this evening. And we are at a place where um, they've been really very glad that Lainey is all right, and um, they've been kind of, you know, working together, if you will, by as a family and enjoying each other. So we're going to begin um, on page 206. Uh, about two paragraphs down, and we might be backtracking just a little bit, um, but this is where they are at um, the beachcomber, and they're having some um, news reporters that have arrived at the beachcomber. Even though the question was directed at Aiden's grandfather, Mr. Shaw hogged the microphone. He spoke in a smooth and silky voice, proclaiming Aiden's grandfather a highly regarded employee and local hero. Okay, we're on page 206. Page 206 at the top of the page where Mr. Shaw is proclaiming Aiden's grandfather a hero, which, you know, he hasn't really been thinking of the grandfather that way, but now that the grandfather is receiving a lot of positive attention, uh, Mr. Shaw is very happy to call him a local hero. Highly regarded employees and local heroes don't get fired, I whispered in Aiden's ear, and his eyes shimmered with delight behind his glasses. I wanted to celebrate with him, but I couldn't yet. What came next would be harder. But if I'd learned anything the past few months, it was that sometimes things have to be said. It's not okay to pretend everything is all right when it isn't. And I couldn't wait around for someone else to act. Sometimes it had to be me. I let go of Aiden's hand and took a step forward. Excuse me, I said, my voice ringing out above the others. I hardly recognized it as my own. My heart hammered in my ears, but I forced myself to keep talking. Excuse me, Mr. Shaw. I waited until I had everyone's full attention. The reporters, no doubt, were surprised to see me taking command of the press conference. They paused to listen to what I had to say. Why has the beachcomber been turning off all the outdoor lights on Tuesdays? I knew the answer and would be more than happy to share it with the reporters. But first, I wanted to see Mr. Shaw squirm. He didn't disappoint. The owner of the beachcomber glanced about at all the eyes bouncing from his face to mine. The crowd was expecting an answer. He tugged at his neck collar and smiled. I'm sure I don't know what you mean, he said, trying to brush me off as quickly as possible. Next question, please. I'm sure you do, I shot back, fire igniting in my veins, but I took a deep breath and held my composure. A volunteer from the Island Turtle Watch walks your beach once a week to make sure there aren't any artificial lighting violations. Somehow you figured out when they come by. You've been making the beachcomber go dark on Tuesdays to make it seem like the inn isn't doing any harm, but it is, you are. You're endangering the lives of sea turtles. That's absurd, Mr. Shaw said and chuckled lightly. At the same time, a thin stream of sweat trickled down his forehead. We're not going to entertain the fantasies of a child, are we? He petitioned the reporters. 
Their silence and stern expressions said they were. One of the reporters, a man with a ski sloped nose, broad cheeks, and thick brown hair eyed me questioningly. When I nodded my approval, he pounced. Mr. Shaw, are you aware it's illegal to interfere with the code enforcement of outdoor lighting of nesting beaches? What? Mr. Shaw, obviously rattled by the sudden turn the interview was taking, said, I, um, yes, I'm, I mean, no. Mr. Shaw, another reporter called out. Why aren't the lights on the beachcomber shielded? As the wolves circled and Mr. Shaw flubbed all the questions thrown at him, a woman separated herself from the crowd and made her way toward Aiden and me. She was older than my mom, but younger than my grandparents. She was wearing a bright green sea turtle watch t-shirt. You must be Olivia Forrester, the woman said as she sidled up to Aiden and me. That's right, I replied and this is my friend, Aiden. I'm Rachel, nice to meet you both. Her face was flushed with excitement. I spoke with you on the phone yesterday, Olivia. She shook my hand and Aiden's. Thank you so much for reporting the beachcombers violations. I'll follow up with the appropriate authorities today, which should be fun after this conference, she grinned. Yeah, I said, imagining there'd be no question of Mr. Shaw's guilt when the authorities watched the interview. But Mr. Shaw had a video as well. Rachel, I have to tell you something, I said, then proceeded to recount how I smashed the beachcomber's light and how the whole thing had been caught on the security camera. Don't worry, she said. After everything that's come to light, Aiden interjected brightly. I teasingly rolled my eyes at him. Uh, yes, Rachel continued. I'm sure nobody will take any charges made against you too seriously. In fact, I'll mention that you're already doing community service by raising funds for the Island Turtle Watch. On the other hand, I guarantee Mr. Shaw will be very sorry for his actions. Not to mention, this beach will be safer for nesting turtles from here on out. I let out a heavy sigh of relief. Rachel smiled. Olivia? Yes. Way to make a difference, she said, and shot me a thumbs up. Even though it was corny and Aiden was standing right beside me, I shot her one back. He, he thought it dorky. Well, so what? After she'd walked away, I grabbed him by the shoulders. There's no way Mr. Shaw can let your grandpa go now, and he has to fix the lighting. Aiden shrugged bashfully. Even though he was inches taller than me, older and slightly more serious than he'd been in previous years, he seemed younger as he shifted beneath my embrace. Thanks, I don't know what to say. I wrapped my arms fully around him and pulled him close. You don't have to say anything, I said. I heard a small gulp, then softly, he hugged me back. You know what this means, don't you? I asked as we drew apart. What? This isn't our last summer together. Aiden's smile stretched impossibly wider across his face. I felt mine doing the same. Aiden took my hand in his again. As we began walking back toward my grandparents' beach house, I was struck by how light and cheerful I felt. Despite all the sadness and uncertainty of the last few months and the rocky times that were sure to come, they always did in that moment. I felt nothing but joy. The night before dad was scheduled to arrive, mom gave Lainey and me permission to go hunting for ghost crabs. We used red LED flashlights that wouldn't disturb the turtles. I leaned in close to my sister and whispered, the turtles aren't bothered by the red light, but a squidopus definitely would be. Lainey giggled and raced ahead of me down the beach. A wave of deja vu washed over me as I watched her go. It was like our second night here when Lainey followed me out to the beach, but it was way different too. Things had changed so much. We had changed so much. Not just Lainey and me, but mom also. We were all making an effort to be honest with one another, to be ourselves, not covering up our pain and fear and uglier emotions, but being kind to one another too. Earlier that day, I told mom what I'd wanted to say ever since she and dad announced the divorce, that I hated it, that I felt like they were killing something wonderful and that I didn't understand why they had to split. Mom didn't have any answers for me, really, but she didn't give a canned response either. We cried together 
and that was enough. Lainey, wait up, I called. I was out of breath when I called up to my sister. Let's go back to the dunes and rest a while, I said. We sat in the exact spot where she planned all the mermaid tears. It reminded me of the letter she'd slipped under my door the night she'd nearly drowned. The letter had crossed my mind several times since, but the moment hadn't been right to ask her about it until now. You scratched out broken on your list, I said. Then you wrote that our family is sea glass. In the moonlight, I could see her head nodding. The unnatural light, unnatural triangle of light the beachcomber had cast on the water was long gone. Mr. Emerson had hung some of our wind chimes near the pool. They tinkled in the wind blowing across the ocean. It sounded magical. Why, I asked. I'd given it a lot of thought and was pretty sure I knew what she meant, but I wanted to hear it from her. You said our family is broken. I heard my sister drag in air, then exhale heavily, and I shifted my gaze to see her staring at the ocean. Maybe you're right, she went on, but bottles get broken too, and the glass gets tumbled by the waves and turned into mermaid tears. Yes, I agreed. And mermaid tears are beautiful. Yes. So something wonderful came, can come from something broken, Lainey said, like sea glass, like us. She, she reached for my hand. Months ago, I would have wriggled away, but now I grasped her fingers in my own. She amazed me, my bold, creative little sister, who'd been battered by the ocean and came out stronger. We both had. It occurred to me that magic does exist, not in a spells and charms and fairy tales sort of way, but in the love we have for one another and in the sometimes ordinary moments that change us forever. I wasn't sure what life would be like back home as we adjusted to mom and dad being divorced. It would never be the same, but that was okay. Every heartache, every tumble would only sharp, soften our sharp edges and make us more extraordinary. That is, if we allow real magic to work its wonders. I gave Lainey's hand a gentle squeeze. I know exactly what you mean. And we have finished this book. I hope you go back and read the last few pages because there's some real insight and understanding in those final pages, not just about mermaid tears and um, Lainey getting better, but about life and being kind to each other and relationships in the midst of troubling times and times that you don't understand. Thank you for letting me read this book with you. It's become one of my favorites. So I thank you for sharing it with me and for letting me share it with you. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow, fourth graders. Take care. Bye now.